What's up? What's up? What is up? Welcome to the Faith and Button Podcast. I'm your host, Pastor K. Listen, happy new year to you. I certainly hope that you guys had a marvelous uh, holiday season and I pray that you guys have been been safe and been uh, doing all the things that you enjoy to do, like spend time with your family or hang out with yourself or whatever you like to do during the holiday season. Listen, we are in season number three of the Faith and Button podcast. And as always, I'm so excited to take part uh, with you guys with this particular podcast. You guys know this is my opportunity where I can relax as the pastor here at Never Alone Christian Center because this is an extension of that uh, of our ministry. And it's just an opportunity where I can just present various topics and just be very, very uh, candid and transparent with these various topics. With that said, if you guys ever have any topic topics that you guys want to hear, drop me a DM, hit me up on uh, social media or uh, an email, and we definitely will consider bringing those topics into uh, the Faith Unbuttoned uh, fold, if you will. Um, it has been a, a fun uh, last previous two seasons. Last season, we did a lot of uh, relationship talk, a lot of marriage talk, and, and I think that that is one of the areas that I like to target um, because I believe that the family is so important and I like to do everything I can to help us as, um, as a family man myself. Uh, just a reminder, guys, listen, this COVID uh, is, is, is surging again. So this is, not, this is not for me going on some crazy tangent here. I'm just simply presenting something to you guys because I want people to continue to be mindful of the COVID and to protect yourself, whether you're vax, non-vax, booster, non-booster, I don't care, okay? But what I want is for all of us to be safe and all of us to travel through this uh, year um, where we're having another uh, appearing to be pandemic surge flowing early through the year. So please, 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 guys, be safe. Take your precautions, protect your family, protect yourself, do what it is that you believe to be wise and safe with good advice to protect yourself throughout the course of the year. All right, guys, listen, uh, it's a new year, okay? Um, so let me just drop a few goals that I have for the year with the Faith Unbuttoned podcast. And then I want to get into our topic tonight, making time for faith in 2022, Making time for faith in 2022. All right, my basic goals, just as a refresher to you guys um, that have been uh, following the podcast, you guys know where I, how I rock through the podcast. But for, for my new streamers, welcome. What's up with you? Okay, so basic goals. Always goal number one is to make faith transparent and relevant to everyday life. My desire is to make faith transparent and relevant to to everyday life. My second goal for the podcast for this year is I want to bring some positive energy into our faith walk. Sometimes our faith walk can become challenging. It can be up. It can be down. Trying to be a husband, trying to be a wife, trying to be single, divorced, widowed, whatever. Trying to be parents, trying to be a student. Wherever you fall on the spectrum in your life, sometimes it can be a challenge. So I want to bring some energy to our faith walk so that we can find joy and doing what we do for God and taking what we do for God and, 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 and pushing it into our everyday life. The third goal, I want to improve or to help us improve family life in the home. Okay. I, I, I get so disappointed or discouraged when, when families are breaking apart or there's no joy in the home. There's no love in the home. There's no peace in the home. So I want to improve the family life, improve the household so the father can be in position, the mother can be in position, the children can be in position. That's one of the goals I want to continue to push forward through this year. And the last goal is simple. I want to bring some guests on this year. If you want to be a guest on the Faith and Button podcast and rock with your boy, Pastor K, hit me up, drop me a DM, and uh, let's see what kind of topic we can put together that may fit your brand and fit the brand of what we're trying to do here. Okay. All right. Those that, that that's it for the goals for, for this year. Okay. You guys know 
Uh, if you don't know, I'm very goal oriented. I believe that having goals in place, having uh, principles in place, keeps things organized and it keeps things in a position to present um, to people. OK, so tonight, let's let's just get to it. OK, the topic is simple. Making time for faith in 2022, 2022. OK. It's hard to believe that it is 2022. I got, uh, uh, um, uh, I have a few milestones coming up this year. I'll be turning 40 in April. Hallelujah. We got to get there. We'll be turning April, uh, 40 in April. Um, shoot, 2022, that means I've been out of high school for 22 years. That makes you old. <laughs> Let's get it, all right? So the topic here, making time for faith in 2022. I'm a firm believer that faith is the beginning and the end of any success in every area of our lives. If we want to have any success in our family, in our career, in our academics, in our entrepreneurship adventures, in our podcast adventures, in our streaming, our YouTube, Instagram, whatever arena you are in, what are you working under the hood of a car, mopping bathroom floors, or at a Fortune 500 uh, company, trading crypto, stocks, Bitcoin, whatever? I believe that faith is the beginning and the end of all our success. Okay? So let me just make that clear. That's my position on faith and why I feel it's so important that we make time for faith. Now, with that said, I don't expect anybody or all of us rather to be what I call quote unquote holy rollers when every day, every waking hour is Jesus, 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 pray, 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 read, read, read. That's unrealistic. Okay. When we are consistently put God first, I truly believe things change in our lives and changes in the lives of those around us. When we at least try, make the attempt to put God first in our lives. It's a new year. What better time is there to start? All right, so let's talk about it. Let me ask you a question. First of all, do you practice your faith? Do you even practice your faith? Okay, do you have a faith? Obviously, I'm a Christian. I believe Jesus Christ is Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I believe that he was born in the Virgin Mary. I believe that he lived in the earth. I believe that he died on Calvary's cross. I believe he went to hell and served our sinners in hell, took the keys of, of death and life from Satan, came back to earth, raised on the third day by his father. That time we serve, uh, known as Easter, the resurrection. And I believe that he lived in the earth for 40 days after that, showed himself to the people with infallible proof. Then he ascended on high to heaven and left us the Holy Ghost. Jesus in a nutshell. That's what I believe. Do you practice your faith? Do you practice it? In other words, do you have a prayer life? Do you read scripture? Do you follow teachings or podcasts or motivational speakers? Are you connected or practicing anything in reference to your faith? You say, well, Pastor K, listen, I know the Lord loves me and I love him and we're good to go. If you're comfortable with that, you listen, do you? Do you? But once again, I believe that faith and our level of inputting our uh, uh, priorities toward faith help us grow in our success in life. OK, second question. And we're going to get to some of these uh, helpful points here. Do we have a routine? Do we have a routine? OK, over the last month and a half, I've been back in the gym. Hallelujah. I've been trying to do my best, guys, I'm trying to burn some of this weight, my weight boop, 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 up and down. But I've hit the 30 day, 35 day mark. OK, so at, at, you know, as they say, 21 days makes it a habit. OK, so I feel like I'm at that point where it's a habit. And I say that because when it's time to go to the gym, I, I just go. Even if I'm tired, like, let me just go to the gym. Let me just knock it out, get it out of the way, because it's become a part of my, of my, of my daily routine. OK, so when I say do we have a routine, we, we have to be able to put our faith into a routine so it just becomes a part of our day to day walk. 
Why do most people struggle to fit God in? Why do most people struggle to, to squeeze God in? First of all, we shouldn't be squeezing God in. God should be at the forefront of our day. All right? So let me just make that clear on where I stand with that. But why do people struggle to put faith in their life? Why do people struggle to, to make it a part of day, their day-to-day -day life? The reality is many of us do not view our faith as necessary to carry on daily. That's, that's, that's the facts. We don't view faith as it, we don't think that it's necessary. Or we don't esteem it to be a, a, a major part of our day-to-day -day life. Let me give you some examples on what we do put first. Let's say gas in the car. No gas, no driving. Gas we deem and we know by experience with the gas light on or being on the side of the road, we know that gas is necessary to make that car go. So we don't, even if we don't want to get gas, even if we feel like our money is low, we find a way to get gas. Why? Because we know without gas, our automobile will not go. So why don't we look at our lives like we're the automobile, our faith is the gas. And if we don't put faith in our life, then we will not go. See, we, but we don't view faith as like as gas in our lives to push us forward. Let me give you another example of the power bill, our utilities. You don't pay your utilities, no lights. What do we do? We pay our utilities. Why? Because we want lights. Why can't our faith be like that? Why can't we see our faith that if we don't spend our time, make the sacrifice, pay our dues unto our Father, unto our Heavenly Father, unto Jesus Christ through prayer, through scripture, through time spent with him, and use that as I'm putting time into him because God represents the light of my life. You see? But the reality of it is we don't view our faith as a necessity. We don't view it as a energy source to day-to-day -day life. We don't view it as a protection of our lives, protection over our marriage, protection over our children. If we viewed it as high or esteemed it as high as we do gas in our vehicle, no one should have to ask you to pray in the morning before you start your day. No one would even have to ask you to get a little word and put it in your life before you travel through your day. It will become automatic. You see, like our job, no job, no food. It's simple. So many of us, many of us see our faith as a bonus, not a benefit. We see faith as a bonus. We don't see it as a, as a benefit. You know, my kids, uh, Kalia and Kenton, Kalia's in, what is she in, seventh grade now. She'll be 13 this year. Kenton's in the fifth grade. He'll be 11 this year. And they come home oftentimes, and we get their, their, syllabus, their syllabus, we have their assignments, and there's extra credit on there. And they always, and I always say, and my wife and I, we say, why, why didn't you do this extra credit? Why, why don't we work on this extra project? Why don't we work on this extra credit? Why, Dad? Why, Mom? Why, why do we want to do the extra credit? That, that's, we don't have to do it. It's a bonus. You see, that's how we view our faith sometimes. Why, why do I have to, to pray? Why do I have to attend behind the scriptures or, or Bible study or Sunday teaching? Or why, why do I need to do it? It's, it's because, you know, I, I don't need God right now. Everything is going good. I got a job. My marriage is good. My family is good. My finances are good. Oh I, oh, I need God. Now, now I need that bonus. I need the extra credit. God, I need to put a little extra time in. I need extra credit. But as I explained to my children, if someone is giving you an opportunity to get ahead in life, to get ahead in class, to get a higher grade in class, why wouldn't you take advantage of the extra credit and see the extra credit as beneficial to a higher grade, to a higher GPA, 
to a greater advancement in life. Why, why wouldn't you see it as, as a benefit instead of looking at it as a bonus? Because what we do is we look at something that goes beyond what is normal as extra. God is asking us to put our faith into our lives to stop looking at our faith as something extra, but look at our faith as a benefit to everyday life. To benef it's a benefit to put faith in our lives throughout the year through small things, such as a morning prayer, such as prayer for your marriage, prayer for your relationship. Maybe you're seeking a husband. Maybe, maybe you're seeking a wife. Maybe you're seeking a home or, or a new car or a new job or an advancement. All God is saying, just, just put me in, in your day. Make, make me as important in your life as gas is to your car. You see, daddy is extra credit. Why, why do I have to do it? Son, daughter, we do the extra credit because it takes us higher. It takes us beyond. And that's what faith does. Faith takes us higher in life. This is why we want to put our faith. This is why we want to make time for our faith in 2022. Why? Because we, we need greater protection, not only from the COVID, but just protection in life. Greater protection physically, mentally. We want greater protection for our children. So we want to go greater. Why? So we want to take our faith, make it a, a part of our day so we can go higher. Higher with God. I understand some people, they're, sat, they're, they're okay in life. They're satisfied with their walk with Christ. They're, they're not going to do any extra praying. They're not going to do any extra scripture reading. No, no extra motivational book readings. They're not going to do any extra prayer time. No extra Bible study. No extra Sundays. You know, they they cool. They 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 do their their little thing in the morning. Their little prayer. Maybe their little daily bread, and they go about their day. But they don't practice their faith throughout the course of the day at all. You know. So how do we fix the problem? Well, I say problem, but how do we fix putting faith? into our life in 2022. First, be realistic. Okay? Listen. With this COVID, we have discovered thousands of churches, ministries. You cannot keep up with everybody. You cannot find a lane, someone teaching you the word of God, as I've been taught and I believe, Someone teaching the Bible, someone who believes in the Bible. Be realistic. Don't set some grand goal. Just like, well, wait, well, I want to lose 40 pounds in the next six months. Crazy. Can it be done? Probably. But I don't even set unrealistic goals like that. And why do most people fail in the health and wellness industry to include myself? Because we set unre unrealistic goals. We do. So be realistic in 2022. Set some small goals on how you want to put faith in your life. Second thing here, how do we implement this? Be consistent. Be consistent. Let me say it one more time. Be consistent. That's what it takes. It takes a level of of consistency. Again, if we view our faith as gas to our automobile, which is our body, we will make sure that our body doesn't run on E and we become broke down on the side of the road. Then we're trying to get God to send down an emergency prayer on, on a holy angel tow truck to bail us out physically. We're laid out on the sick bed. Now we need God to bail us out. Let's not, we don't want to, we don't want to get there. We want God to be with us. We want God to be protecting us. We want him to be watching over us. We want, we want the holy angels to protect us and watch over us. So we want to put him at the forefront of our day. And the third thing, I'll, I'll, and the third thing, I want to get you three things. Be realistic, be consistent. And the third one is, is, is to me, is very important. Be patient. Be patient with yourself. If you've never had a, a routine with your faith, be patient. Don't beat yourself up 
It takes time to get into a routine, but you want to get the routine to put faith into your day-to-day life in 2022. Let me give you a small example of um, a day-to-day operation of putting faith in, in your life. And then we're going to get out of here because I want you to go enjoy your Friday. Start with an AM prayer. When you get out of the bed, put your feet on the floor, whether you're in the shower, whatever, or whether you're in the car, on the only way to commute to work. I pray a lot of times on the way to work. Turn the radio off, the, the, the music off, and I pray on the way to work. AM prayer. You know, you ain't got to be all spiritual and deep in vows. Father, in the name of Jesus, boom, you go. Tell God about your day. Tell God what you want to happen in your day. Thank God for protecting you. Thank God for protecting your family and your children. Thank God for making your marriage strong. Thank, thank God for allowing you to, to see another day. Thank God for protecting you from all hurt, harm, danger, seen and unseen, etc., etc. Start with an AM prayer. This is putting God at the forefront of your day, making him important in your life by making him first in the day. The second routine or the second thing, a short scripture. A psalm, one, one, a, a common practice is read one, um, one psalm a day. It's hundreds of them. One psalm a day or one Proverbs a day. You know, I don't have time to, you have a phone. Stop. Don't make no excuse. Download one of the little Bible apps. A common one is the Bible app. There are reading plans on there. Just pull it up. Daily scripture. Just read one a day. If you don't feel like reading it, sit, put it on auto. Let it read to you. On the way to work. Okay? So we got our AM prayer. We got our short scripture. And the last thing, a PM prayer. A prayer before you go to bed. A prayer before you go to bed. That's it. That is it. 2022, start there. Let's do that. Let's what what are we in? January? Let's see if we can get do that through the rest of this month. An AM prayer a short scripture, and a PM prayer. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. All right? Listen, guys, thank you for tapping into the Faith and Button podcast tonight. I love you guys. Praying for you. And I certainly hope that, that God is continuing to bless you and watch over you and keep you safe. I want you guys to help me grow this podcast by sharing it. Share it with your family and friends. Push it out. If you haven't followed us and liked us yet on YouTube, what you waiting for? Come on, hit the subscribe button, hit a like on it, drop me a comment, say what's up, let me know that you tap it in, and I appreciate it. Don't forget, you can join any of our services at Never Alone Christian Center. You can stream on YouTube, you can visit our website, um, you can find our podcast on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Get connected in 2022, because we believe the Bible, we teach the Bible, we're relevant, we're transparent, and our theme this year is Kingdom thinking. All right. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Let's go.